Hey, welcome back everybody. Now we're gonna continue on with our form demo here. And where we're at right now is adding this email validation field. So right now, if someone comes in here and types an invalid email address, we'd like to figure out how do we configure our control to pop up and to pop open this message at the top, turn the border red, and then ultimately just reset it to its original state like this. Right now we've got it going, so we've got the text field showing up, but we're not doing any validation. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. Now the trick to getting this to work is initially when I did this, I wanted to just come in here, type some invalid email address, and then change this label that says email to basically red text that says email is invalid. But I couldn't actually get it to work by doing that. The very act of changing the text of this font for some reason that I don't understand, move this animation over or this label over and um, it just didn't work the way I wanted. So what we're gonna do in order to solve this is I'm going to actually create a brand new label called invalid label. It's gonna permanently have this red coloring and I'm gonna swap it out for this green one. That's how I kind of got around this problem due to my lack of core animation and what was going on. I was able to get around it just by changing the visibility and creating an extra label. So that's what we're gonna do first. So let's start like we always do by just getting that label on the screen. Let's go into our form field view here. Let's create a brand new label. Let's call this one invalid label. This is gonna be a UI label. And let's just start styling and adding that to our control. So we'll start with the styling. Let's just go down to our style section. And in here you can see we're just gonna continue our pattern of adding new elements, maintaining the order. And in this case, because invalid appears roughly in the same area as label, I'm just gonna stick it in here. And this is where we're going to do our coloring and tinting. Now this text color, we're gonna make system red. We'll set it up for auto layout. We'll set the text. We'll give it a preferred font size of caption size one. If you aren't familiar, this is basically the iOS system of using the recommended fonts uh, to make sure that things look and act a certain way. So we're gonna use the preferred font style here of caption one. And the advantage we get of doing this over hard coding the font size is this will resize itself for accessibility. So always use a preferred font if you can. And then we will want to hide this uh, invalid label eventually, but for now, let's not. Let's just get it on the screen. And let's just go down here and see if we can do some auto layout and get it positioned where we want it. So in this case, let's see, we really want this label to be really almost in the exact same place where our green one is. And remember this green one got up there because we translated and shrunk it. And just because I've played with this a bit, I happen to know the constraints are gonna look something like this. We're gonna want a top anchor constraint of about six points from the top and a leading anchor. This can still be our system multiplier of two. So we've got that consistent 16 points coming on the leading edge there. And if we do that, and of course we remember to add it to the sub view, we should see it pop up on our screen. So let me just run this. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay, great. It's showing up roughly where we want it. If I hit tab, you can see that email pretty closely mirrors where we want it to be. So that's good enough for me. Now let's just add the functionality to hide and show it depending upon what someone types in here uh, as keyboard input for a email address. Okay, the first thing we're gonna to do to handle this email is we're gonna use a regular expression uh, syntax to basically do the checking of the email formatting. Now this is actually a real rabbit hole that you can dig into. There's all sorts of opinions on how to do regex, uh, pattern checking for email attributes. This is one I found that I like. It's just a function called isValidEmail. It's gonna take email address as a string. It's gonna apply this regex on it, create this predicate, and then evaluate it to see if there's any matches. So that's just a convenience function I'm gonna use here. We go and check the actual email address. Now, when it comes to grabbing the text and actually formatting it, let's go up to our protocol delegate 
And right here, this is where we're going to grab the code. We're going to grab the text from the text field. And I'm just going to drop some code in here and I'll show you what's going on. And this is interesting. These system reds are shortcuts to UI colors and UI kit, but we can actually use them here because layer is actually on the CA layer. So for me to specify the color here, I have to go UI color dot system red dot CG color. And that's the underlying color. UI color is a UI kit abstraction that CA a core animation doesn't know anything about. That's why we have to specify this extra CG color here. But let's just go over what's happening here when we actually type in an email address. So what we want to see happen is when someone finishes typing in an address like this, which is invalid, and they hit return, we want that text to come to us. We're going to check to see if it's valid by calling that isValid regex expression we defined below. And if it is valid, we're just going to go ahead and undo uh, the animation that we've done here. So if I type in a valid email address, foo at bar, and hit return, we just wanted to undo that. And if there's a problem, we want to show an invalid email message. So in that case, if it's invalid, what we're going to do is we're going to basically hide and show some labels. We're going to hide the email label. We're going to make the invalid email uh, visible. And we're going to color the border, make it red, and we're going to color the tint to make the text red also. Or sorry, the make the caret of the text field here red. That's what's going on with this text field tint color here. So that's what we want to do. So if we run this now on our app, let's just see what happens. Uh, oh yes, we're still showing the email is valid. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. So up at the top where we do our styling, we initially want to hide the invalid button. So we'll go ahead and hide that. Let's run it again. So now it's hidden. If we tap in here, that's good. It's animating up. Let's write in some not great email address and voila. There we hit return. The email is invalid. It's hidden the green label that was there before. Let's put the red one in, it's changed the border to red. It also changed the tint of the text field to red. And if we type in something invalid, it stays here. And if we type in something that is valid, it still stays there. <laughs> Looks like we're missing the, it's not quite resetting correctly. We still have to hide this email is invalid. Let's go see why we're not doing that. And I think the problem is if we scroll down to our undo method, when we're undoing, we're not actually putting back the original email that should be there along with hiding this one. So if we go to the visibility section of undo and we add these two lines, we're going to take our label, the original email, and we're going to make it visible and we're going to hide the um, invalid one. So by adding those two, let's now run it again and see if we get the functionality we'd like. So it's kind of iterative, you know, you got to come in here, and just kind of play with this stuff and see if it's working and okay, let's put in something that looks valid and voila, there we go. Uh, I've still got, oh, it looks like I'm missing a green tint. I should have set back the green tint and we can fix that. If we go to our email, enter email animation, I need to reset that tint back and I can do that here by going like this. That of course should be system green and let's go ahead and run that so there we go foo at bar.com enter and voila there we go a nice looking control does some real cool looking stuff and there you have it in a nutshell well whew, we did it that was a good chunk of work <laughs> If you're just joining us, go back and you can see in the previous episodes everything we did to get to this point. Let's just quickly recap. We created a brand new view controller. We extracted a view. We designed a custom view here, which has a label, a text field, a cancel button. We did an animation where the label comes up to the upper left. We canceled it and brought it back down. 
The actual animation code is very, very little. The bulk of the work here is actually setting up the view, styling, and changing the color of things as a result of dealing with the text from the text field, adding an email validator, and then finally having it work if you enter in some email address that looks valid. But that, in a nutshell, is what goes into building one of these controls. You can see it's not rocket science. It just takes some work, a lot of iteration, and really just knowing a few you know, fundamental core iOS things. Obviously, knowing Swift helps. Uh, Auto layout played a big role in doing this. We did do some animation, and I'm just scratching the surface on animating things myself. So as I come up with new things, I'll be sure to share them here with you. But if you like this video, uh, do hit like, do hit subscribe. Drop me a comment down below and tell me whether you prefer the short summary. The very first video in this section, for example, just you know basically showed you the code, gave you the demo and said, off you go, feel free to use. But if you like this longer form too and you find it helpful, do drop me a line and I'll, I'll try to continue doing these too. They do take more work, but if they're helpful, uh, I'm happy to do them for you as the audience. And of course, you can find the source code on my website under Swift Arcade. Under animation login, you'll see the readme file uh, explaining basically how the app is built. But if you just want to see the source code, go in there, check out login, and under login demo, you'll see the Xcode project. Anyways, that's a wrap for now. Thank you so much for coming, everyone, and best of luck on your projects. Okay, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.